yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. I think some other folks will trickle in, but um, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Taylor Mulia. I'm the New Agrarian Program Colorado Manager. Um, I live in Lyons, which is about uh, halfway between Boulder and Estes Park in a Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I've been with this program for two and a half years and love it. I believe this is an amazing program and super excited to see everyone's faces. This is one of my favorite times of the year to see our new applicants. So, um, so to begin with, I will let my team introduce ourselves and then we'll jump into a slideshow. I just want to mention at the top here that this is being recorded so you can see it afterwards, but um, we will send you the recording and the slideshow um, in case you need to bow out. So uh, Hayden, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, <clears throat> my name is Hayden Vandenberg. I'm the coordinator in Montana and the Northern Plains. Um, and I work with Luca on coordinating your apprenticeship and communicating with both you and the mentors. Um, Luca? Yeah, my name is Luca Sampson. Um, Hayden is more located on the central to eastern part of Montana, and uh, I'm located in Belgrade, Montana, so more on the west. Um, I'm the Northern Plains manager here up here in Montana for the new Gurian program. Um, and uh, yeah, like Hayden said, we work with mentors and apprentices up here in the northern part of where our program is. Hey all, my name is Holly Napier. I uh, am based out of Southwestern Colorado um, in the Durango area. I'm the NAP Southwest coordinator. So my territory tends to be Southern Colorado, the Western Slope of Colorado, and then outreach down into New Mexico as well. My main job is to support mentors and apprentices during, uh, during the season. And it's nice to see all of you here. Great. Um, now, I guess we can jump into our slideshow. Luca, do you want to share your screen? Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. So, um, if yeah, I'm sure everyone knows why they're here, uh, but for the recording, we this is called NAP 101. Uh, we do these every year to sort of just open the floor to applicants and create a space where folks can ask questions, but also get a little more detail about the mentor sites. So, what we'll do at the top is just explain a little bit about our program in general, and then we'll actually go through each individual site and give you a little bit more information you might not find on the site descriptions. So um, you want to go back one, Luca? There we go. Yeah, in case, obvious, I think this is obvious at this point, but um, the New Agrarian Program is an apprenticeship program. We partner with ranchers and farmers in the arid and semi-arid west to offer annual eight-month of paid apprenticeships and regenerative agriculture. So um, that's the structure. I think at the top here, it's really important to say that um, this is a, a work-based apprenticeship. So uh, it's really awesome to want to explore different parts of your career and see what it's like, but uh, we, we always want to make sure applicants know that this apprenticeship is going to be a lot of hard work, but it's, it'll be very, very worth it. And so we're excited to partner you up with people that you'll not only work hard with, but also learn from. So the nuts and bolts of the program are that it is eight months full time. So you won't be able to have another job while you do this. Um, and, but it is from March, and April, March, April ish to November. Technically, you as an apprentice are employed by your mentor. And so sometimes that's a little confusing for people. They think that Kivera employs or is hiring the apprentices, but it actually is an employment relationship between the mentor and the apprentice. We're just kind of like a matchmaker. And we also provide a lot of support to the program and structure around it. So apprentices usually work about six days a week with a mixture of direct contact with the mentor and independent work. And you'll hear throughout this presentation, um, every mentor has a different style, right? Some people really love teaching and love being right there next to you and have the capacity to spend that much time with an apprentice. But we've noticed throughout the program, as we've uh, seen it through several years, we notice that certain mentors have a, a tendency to be a little more of the style of like, hey, I'm gonna teach you this one thing, 
you go off and do it. Make that mistake and tell me why you made, or like tell me how you made the mistake and tell me how you're gonna fix it. And so kind of keep tuned for that. If you're the kind of person who knows that they need to have a lot of mentor contact, um, that's just something to kind of keep an eye out for because some folks can be, it can be a spectrum. Compensation also varies quite a bit. You'll notice that um, minimum wage between the Western states is quite different now. And so you'll see that the monthly stipend can be anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 on average per month. Um, and all of them include housing. Some of them subtract a little, th little bit for housing, but there is housing included in every mentor site. So aside from the apprenticeship, the actual work that you'll be doing on the ranch, Kivira and all of us, we, we provide sort of an, a network of other education to access while you're on your mentor site. So when you first arrive, there is a regional orientation in late March or early April. So for apprentices in Colorado, we're gonna have ours around April 7th or so, and then the Northern Plains is late March. So sometimes that means that you're traveling to your mentor site with all of your stuff in your truck and you stop by orientation on the way. Uh, sometimes that means going to your mentor site for a month before coming to orientation, and sometimes it lines up kind of funky. So it just depends on what, what your start date is, and that changes uh, with every mentor. And re the orientation is a great chance to get to know each other. It's sort of this shared, like, holy crap, we're doing this kind of thing, where you look at everyone else and you're like, okay, we've got this. We, we can get through this together. And um, it's really awesome to build that cohort. Then the mid-season regional gatherings, those are uh, mostly educational. You'll see in the background of this photo, we did a low stress livestock handling workshop, and that's a feature of both the Colorado and Northern Plains groups. We also do a supplemental education Zoom webinar every month while you're in the apprenticeship, and that can range, essentially those are bringing in topics that you're not really going to necessarily learn on your ranch, but might be good to just have some context. So we've done ones on financial planning, um, climate change, wildlife interaction, um, holistic goal setting, stuff like that. Then there's two written reflections you'll see on the New Agrarian Voices blog on our website. Those You can see that there's one at the beginning of the season and one at the end. And then we also have skill sheets where you can track your progress with your mentor. So it's just an, ex an Excel spreadsheet where you rank yourself on certain skills, they rank you, and then you do it again mid-season and you do it again at the end of the season. So we can all kind of track that progress. And it's really a great opportunity for you to talk to your mentor about things that you're really stoked on learning and things that are gonna be really challenging for you to learn. Then at the end of the season, we get together for the Regenerate Conference. This is wrong. It sometimes is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but it's been in Denver. This year it was in Santa Fe. It's generally in the Southwest because that's where, that's where Kibar Coalition is based. Um, also, we have an education stipend that piece kind of changes year to year too. Um, essentially, we want you to have a little bit of wiggle room to go visit other mentor sites and maybe go visit a workshop if there's one in your area. And all of that, all throughout the season, you'll have a coordinator, which is one of us four, and we will be doing monthly check-in calls with you. We'll just be there for anything. So you need to text us or call us for anything if you're feeling in over your head, if you're feeling great, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling excited to reach out and need some resources, we're here the entire time. So that's a really unique and important aspect of our program. All right. Um, Taylor has touched on quite a bit of this already, but um, just for you to kind of visualize and see what the timeline of the program is. Um, we opened applications November 1st. They're going to be open until December 15th. Um, so you have about a month left um, to turn in your application. Um, winter time um, is kind of the interview time. Um, we usually mentors will reach out sometime in January to set up interviews. Some of them are a little bit earlier and get excited to get a head start and We'll try and reach out right away in December. Um, and then we plan on um, trying to have everybody notified if they have received a spot for an apprenticeship by February 1st. Um, then we roll into spring. 
Um, like Taylor said, our orientations are in late March and early April. Um, you start your apprenticeship around March or beginning of April at the latest, depending on what your and the mentor's needs are. Um, we start out with the first skills checklist in the spring um, and then our um, online and field supplemental education also starts in the spring. Um, summer is a very busy time of the year in our apprenticeship. Um, the days get really long. Um, so a lot of people, usually we have a mid-season gathering around end of July, a beginning of August here in Montana. And that's kind of a good time when everybody's ready to leave the ranch and see some other faces um, for a few days. Um, and then um, as we get into fall, uh, November is when our apprenticeship ends, and that's where you graduate at our Regenerate Conference. Questions to ask yourself. Where do you want to be? Is there, do you have location preferences? Um, what are you, what are your hopes and dreams for the kind of landscape that you're going to be in? What skills are you hoping to learn? Um, what kind of operation do you want to be on? Um, and and like Taylor kind of said, what do you, what type of learner are you? What are you hoping um, for your mentor? What kind of mentor style would work for you? Um, and is there anything that you read on the site description that makes you nervous? It is really easy to get super excited when reading through this stuff and kind of trying to ignore some of the things that you might read in there that maybe you won't like. That's not a good idea. Um, be sure to kind of um, listen to your gut on that if there is anything on there that you think might be kind of a difficult uh, match for you. Um, if you have questions anytime, feel free to ask us. Um, I know there are a lot of information online, but it really is worth taking the time and reading through um, each site description and uh, really be sure that this is a place that you can see yourself being on. Uh, like I said, feel free to check in with us anytime if you have any questions. Um, it is very important for your um, application that you narrow down your preferred sites to five. Um, every mentor box that you check in your application will receive your application. And um, we really want that to be a maximum of five. Um, and like I said, we're happy to try and help you narrow it down. If you have more than five, that sound good to you. Um, and then make sure in your application to really touch on each mentor site. Why do you think you'd be a good fit for them and why you're interested in doing your apprenticeship there? Um, start early. You don't receive preference no matter if you uh, apply now or yesterday or in three weeks from now. That doesn't make a difference. Just make sure that you don't miss December 15th. Um, and then really important, um, be honest and realistic about your experiences that you have. It's super uncomfortable for you and the mentor if there's expectations on, for example, you being a great horse person and then they send you to grab a horse and saddle it and it turns out that you actually don't really know what to do. Um, so there is no expectation on our mentor sites that you come as an expert. You're here to learn um, and just keep that in mind and be be really honest so that your mentor knows what what they're getting into and that you don't feel pressured when you start your apprenticeship and trying to be someone that you're not. Our tips and trips webinar was last week, um, but we do have the recording. Um, so if you need that, let us know. And maybe actually Taylor, is it on the website already? It's not on the website. I just put it in the chat though. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, Hayden, do you wanna take us through some mentor operations in Montana? Sure. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the Montana mentor sites briefly, but if <clears throat> you have any questions along the way, um, feel free to come off mute and Luca and I'll answer them. Okay, so first, just kind of an overview of the state of Montana. I think a lot of people picture Montana, they picture 
the rugged Rocky Mountains and the beautiful um, mountain landscape. And that's true. We do have beautiful mountain landscape, but we also have the gorgeous Great Plains. And so there is kind of a vast difference in um, what your topography will be um, in Montana. So as you can tell, similar to most states in the West, the Western part of our state is the Rocky Mountains. And then the Eastern part is the Great Plains Prairie. So if you're really interested in being in the mountains and that's what pulls on your heartstrings, um, I would take a look on the site description of where you're located. Um, I will say as someone who grew up in the mountains and was absolutely not going to live on the prairie at all, I now live in central Montana and I'm in love with the prairie. So give it a chance if the site description really pulls at your heartstrings. And then <clears throat> just kind of an idea of where we're located. <clears throat> the Bozeman, greater Bozeman area, um, right in the heart of the mountains is where Luca gets to live. Um, so she handles everything kind of west and even into Idaho for the first time this year. Um, and then I'm right in the center of the Montana in Roundup, right on the plains. So and we're pretty um, close to you and um, we get to do site visits once a year. So one of us will come to you. <clears throat> Our first ranch is Bartholomew's Ranch. Um, this one's in northeastern Montana. Um, we call the northern fourth of the state the High Line. So it's the prairie. It's very remote. They live um, an hour down a dirt road from their small town. Um, you work really closely and they really bring the apprentice into their family. So Leo's in the center. He's the main mentor, but you also work a lot with his brother, Chris, who is kind of the cattle guy. Um, especially when you first get there, you'll night calve with Chris. So um, these guys do a lot of night calving. Um, it's rangy. They do not use horses, um, but they do use um, vents collars so yeah virtual fencing collars um which is pretty cool and leo was actually one of the first ranchers to sign up for trying out the vents collars so he's super knowledgeable he's worked with a lot of different organizations to um do that and that being said he's worked with a lot of organizations in montana um so he has a lot of connections and connect you to you know the nature conservancy um ranching stewardship alliance he also has really large BLM leases, so he can kind of walk you through what leasing big federal land looks like. Um, and he's just like the nicest guy ever. They're just really great people. So that's them. Sailors are northern, northern Montana. Um, they are our only place in Montana that is farm heavy. Um, so if you're really interested in regenerative farming, this is one to put at the top of your list. They do small grains and lentils. Um, they do some haying, so you could get experience in a swather and a combine um, and in a tractor. So if you're interested in that, this would be really great. And Jeff's really good about, even if you have no experience in any of the machinery, slowing it down and teaching you that. He does also have cows that he does moderate intensive grazing. They move once a week to once every three weeks with polywire. So you do get cattle, um, but this is a really cool one if you're interested in regenerative farming. Um, and they also have a ranch manager, ranch hand that you work really closely with. Um, but yeah, it's pretty remote. It's Northern, Northern Montana. The VBRA, um, is as far east Montana as you can get, basically North Dakota. And as someone who used to think as far east Montana, that used to be ugly, this is probably one of the most beautiful ranches I've ever been on. It's just rolling, rolling hills, green grass. Um, it's super diverse landscape. He's got flat, flat bottoms that he does high intensity daily moves. And then these really beautiful rolling hills that he moves cows across as much as he can with polywire. Um, if you are a horse person and you do have horse experience, this would be a really cool ranch. Jim's a big horse guy and they do 
just because of the landscape and topography of the ranch have to use horses a lot or four wheelers. So this is one where it's not easy, just polywire moves. You're going to be working hard um, on a horse, on a four wheeler, um, but really incredible, beautiful place. He has a young family and his son is in, I think, high school and works alongside you and Jim a lot too. Um, but this one I will say is probably our most remote ranch. Um, you're the farthest from any other apprentice and you do have to take um, some independent work along with it. So, yeah. Enderlin is um, a really cool ranch. It's actually really well located if you're into like hiking on your day off. It's right by the interstate, it's probably an hour and a half, I think, from Billings, which is our biggest city in Montana, and um, probably an hour from Bozeman, mountains all around. It's right next to the Crazy Mountains, which uh, are an island chain not at all related to the Rocky Mountains. They're the youngest mountains in Montana. Um, Roger and Betsy are registered seed stock, Black Angus. So they run a really detailed operation, um, a lot of shoot work, a lot of handling of bulls and heifers. Um, and so if you're interested in the registered seed stock side, this is a really great ranch. Um, this is a unique one to Montana. We might have others, but for sure this one, they take two apprentices each year. So you would share a house, you'd have your own bedroom, but you share a house with an apprentice, um, which is nice because you have someone right there with you, but you also work and live with someone. So it's something to consider. Um, it's also really well located. We have a lot of young people in Big Timber. We have a new ranch in Big Timber. So if you think community is really important to you, I think Inderlands would be a really great one to apply to. Besith is new. Um, they say Malta, but I think they're still like 45 minutes from Malta. Um, so they're pretty remote, similar to Leo and other guys in on the Highland and in that area. It's a large ranch and most of it's made up of BLM leasing. So another great one to latch onto if you're interested in BLM leasing. Um, they run pairs, but they also are in the seed stock operation. They sell bulls and heifers. Um, and the cool one that Luca and I are fighting over who gets to go help is they AI 800 heifers a year. So um, if you're interested in AI, they said they'd love to have someone on that would be um, interested in learning that side of things. Um, this is not a horse place at all. It's super remote. It's super vast landscape, but Dale and Janet only use four wheelers. If they ever need horses, they call someone in. Um, but Dale and Leo have both said that they're interested in getting the apprentices together on days um, they need heavy workload. So you might be able to kind of have companionship in Leo Bartholomew's apprentice. Again, they're both an hour from the town. So it's not like you're right next to each other, but you would have someone semi-close. Schultz Ranch is not far from me. It's pretty much central Montana. Um, they're a really cool young family. They have three sons that work along with you. Um, they're cow-calf. They do some small direct marketing. Um, they use polywire. Um, and like Taylor was saying before, Nick is one of those mentors that really likes to teach you hands-on for a moment and then send you off on your own so you can kind of learn from your own mistakes. Um, so this is a really good one if you're an independent worker and you kind of want to take on those skill sets and then go do them yourself. Um, yeah. Mo Ranch is in, I don't even know, central western Montana. It's right there on the edge. It's also near the crazy mountains, so really pretty landscape. Um, it You have a nice little like cabin you get to live in, um, and Shane's really quiet person, but really patient and understanding. Um, it's multi-generational, so there's kids and his dad, 
I don't think his dad makes any decisions anymore, but there's family there. So you do have to deal with um, multiple families. They do some haying, but it um, sounds like maybe they're trying to get out of the haying game, but so mainly cows. Um, yeah. I always mention too, Shane Moe is a vet. So that's kind of cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I keep forgetting that. Yeah. That is a cool aspect. Um, Mannix Ranch is Western Montana. Uh, I think it's like Luca helped me here, maybe an hour or so, two hours from Missoula. So you're not far from a city center, but other than Missoula, you're pretty far from anything. It's interestingly, I think pretty much exactly an hour from Missoula and also an hour from Helena. Um, so, so that valley that you're in is pretty remote in and of itself but within an hour drive you can get to like bigger cities <laughs> I know that always cracks me up I call these big towns in Montana cities and then Taylor drove us through Denver the other day and I realized I have no idea what a city is um but yeah so it it feels really remote it's also a really beautiful area um this is where in the past, and I think even next year, we've done our low stress livestock handling. Um, they're on the fence about hiring an apprentice for this next year, just because their apprentice enjoyed working with them so much, she might stay as a hired hand. Um, but if not, this is a really good place. If you're interested in kind of in family dynamics, it's a really interesting family that pretty much all the kids have come back in some capacity or other. They might have some side gig. There's direct marketing and um, a festival that a son puts on, but there's a dad and sons and cousins and sisters. And so if you're kind of interested in seeing how family dynamics work on a, a pretty big place, this is a cool one. And and big horse, they're big horse people. And lots of different people to learn from, which is really cool. Yeah, with a big family, you have different generations and different point of views. So, yeah. And lots of haying, too, I believe. If you're into haying and want to learn that, that's a big hay place. Um, Coulter Ranch is central eastern Montana. Um, this is just stalkers or feeder cattle. Um, they don't have any cows um, or pears, so they don't do any calving or anything like that which is kind of nice when you're getting there springs in montana can be hard um they do polywire high intensity grazing they'll go from a day move to two two weeks between moves so they're pretty um all over the map on how intensity they do just depending on um, grass production and um, quality of timing of year so um, cool place, young family. You do have probably maybe the nicest house in all of Montana. It's like a nice little double wide or yeah, prefab home. So if that's something you're yeah. thinking about, this is a good one for that. It's uh, three bedrooms, two baths, but they are likely going to take two apprentices this year. So it would be a shared home. And they did have... Um, an apprentice with a wife and a son there this year. So they're super family friendly. One minute, my dog. Luca, do you want to take this one? And Rosie's barking. Yeah. If anybody wants to do the big city life while uh, doing the apprenticeship, um, this is the place. Um, Oxbow is unfortunately likely not going to take an apprentice this year um, because this year's apprentice wants to do a second year. Um, but um, these guys basically live in Missoula. Um, the ranch, it's a lot of like, yeah, ranching at the edge of town. Um, they have a really interesting direct marketing um, set up so and they're first generation ranchers so um, it's yeah uh, they're a really cool operation to learn from okay and then I have three more new mentors this year here on the west side of the state <clears throat> um, AMB West Ranch is, is a really interesting one um, they're located in Emigrant, Montana, so just really just north outside of Yellowstone National Park. 
um, <clears throat> probably about an hour drive from Bozeman. Um, and AMB West um, is owned um, by the Arthur Blank Foundation. And they, I believe it's four ranches. <clears throat> um, their big ranch is uh, Mountain Sky Guest Ranch. And uh, so there's the Dude Ranch operation. And then um, the Knapp Apprentice will be more on the cattle side of things um, with an option to kind of get a little bit of an insight into all parts of the operation. If anybody is interesting in hunting, this is a really good place to be on. There's a lot of elk on the place. Um, they would totally be able to teach somebody um, ride to ride horses. Um, and what's really interesting about this one, anybody who is kind of concerned about, you know, loneliness and the community aspect of things, AMB West has about 70 to 100 employees um, during the season, mostly on their guest operation. But since all these operations are together, um, they kind of have their own little tight knit community. A lot of young people, um, you get fed three times a day, seven days a week. Um, so this is kind of a little bit, um, different of an operation compared to most of our family ranches that we have mentoring in our program. <clears throat> Then there's Compass Cattle, um, also a new mentor this year, um, located in Big Timber, just like the Inderland Ranch. Um, Big Timber is a pretty good hub, generally, of apprentices and former apprentices. So if you're kind of looking for that, um, this is a kind of a good area to be in. Um, Compass Cattle is also our only operation that has bison. So if anybody's interested in bison, this would be a really interesting place to be on. They also like to use cattle and are willing to teach somebody. And then for the first time, we have one location, one mentor location in Idaho this year. And this is um, Pratt Livestock. They're located in Blackfoot, Idaho. They're also a family ranch, so you'd be working with family members. Um, I think there is a lot of cool things to learn on this place. They're really nice people. One thing that I would like to point out um, that does get noticed by apprentices, um, and this isn't the only place where that is an issue, but the further you're kind of away from, you know, the, the middle of the state, in this case, that's kind of more of the big timber Montana area the harder it feels sometimes to stay connected to the community. Um, you're inevitably going to have longer trips to go to any kind of events that we have. Um, our orientation is generally somewhere between Billings and Red Lodge in that general area. So this does mean a little bit more driving. And um, so that's just something to keep in mind for places like this. Also Vibare Ranch or say there's <clears throat> all these places that are kind of a little bit more on the edge of, of the apprentice community. All right. That okay. was Montana. Does anybody have any questions about any of those? Perfect. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> that was kind of a lot to say. <laughs> okay, so if you want to advance to the next slide. So our state is actually, you know, pretty similar to Montana, but we have a little bit more of what's called the Western Slope. So on that Western side, it gets really dry. And, um, and yeah, so I think if, if folks haven't been to Colorado before, it's worth um, thinking about, yeah, what kind of environment do you want to be in? Do you want to be really remote? Do you like the prairie? Um, like Hayden said, the prairie is actually in my like how i perceive it seems to be extremely more biodiverse than than the mountains can seem like you close your eyes on the prairie sites and you can hear birds like everywhere it's just a really beautiful ecosystem um so i think people overlook it a lot but what i think the you know the eastern part of colorado can be absolutely gorgeous 
So Holly and I split up this state uh, kind of funky, but it's actually kind of in a, in a diagonal. And so I have the front range, which is kind of near Denver. Yeah, so I take Northwestern Colorado and the front range, and then Holly is the coordinator for the other sites, sort of on the other triangle. So yeah, and, and then it's really just the same thing as Montana. You've got the, the high mountains, but generally where ranches are, are gonna be places with a little bit more flat topography. So you can find there are little, most of our sites are in little flat spots. Okay, so the first site is actually kind of a funky one. This one is um, just in terms of what they're accepting this year. So Northwestern Colorado, uh, if anyone's ever been to Steamboat Springs, this is about 45 minutes away from Steamboat. So a really small town, and but it does have access to the, you know, to a, a town where you can find folks or, you know, go get a beer with somebody. Um, high mountains, so super high elevation, crazy short growing season, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll be talking to them and they'll be just turning out cow in late May, early June, and then they start getting snow in early October. And so it's really, you know, that, that season really shortens up when you get up to the elevations. So their current apprentice is likely going to stay as an employee. That's him right there in the pink shirt. His name's Zach. And he will probably be staying to mainly just do the regular operations of the ranch, but mostly focus on the cattle aspect. And then this new apprentice will be focusing strictly with the sheep. So they'll be finding a trailer to live in. Don't worry, once when it's really cold, they'll accommodate you in a house. But once it gets nice out, um, I can't imagine. I think it'd be really fun to live kind of nomadically like that if, if that's something that you're at all interested in. You know, you live in a trailer and kind of move with the sheep in sort of a traditional fashion. I think that's how most of the sheep were herded traditionally in Colorado. And so there is contact with the mentor. Tyler's an awesome guy. It's a really, he's got a young family. His wife works for the uh, Cattlemen's, Colorado Cattlemen's uh, Land Trust. And so they're kind of into that sort of conservation side of things too. And yeah, we're looking for just the right person for this job. So if you've never worked with sheep before, or if you've never been on a ranch or never really uh, lived a remote independent lifestyle, kind of a quiet lifestyle, this one might not be the one for you. But I do think there are some certain people out there that this will really appeal to. So we're not certain we're going to hire, but I thought we'd throw it out there and see if we could find just the right fit. Our next site is the home ranch, which is about an hour away from them. So these two are kind of uh, concentrated up there in northwestern Colorado. Clark is a very small town, has a post office, a school, and a store, and that's pretty much it. And uh, really, I mean, gorgeous country. This ranch is owned by a wealthy landowner. He is um, really dedicated to regenerative agriculture. So they have the ranching piece. They have a vegetable operation. They also have a performance horse arena and they train horses there. Um, it's fascinating, multi-faceted operation. I mean, you go there and there's constantly things moving, earth moving, lots of things happening. They're building a wedding venue. They're building a conference center. I mean, it's just big. And so there's a lot of people around. So if you actually find that you do want to be around a lot of people, the crew of this ranch is quite big. You'll be working mainly with Lena. She is, you know, late twenties. She's actually been working on the ranch for about 10 years. So she has a ton of experience. And this is really, um, the, the, I think the kind of person that would love this operation is someone that, um, really wants to improve their horsemanship. They say that you don't necessarily have to have any horse experience, but um, it's just, just based on the apprentice last year, I think it would help quite a bit. There's some rough country that if you are, if you do have a little bit, bit of experience, you can really hone in your horsemanship because there's quite a range of terrain. Um, and then, yeah, they're trying out virtual fencing too. So it's pretty cool. I'll pass this one off to Holly. Thanks, Taylor. So the High Lonesome Ranch is located on the western slope of Colorado. Um, the little town of Debet, Colorado is really little. It has a little restaurant that's a bar. Um, it's got a little bike shop, a beauty shop, and a little bitty um, store. 
Um, groceries would be down the highway um, about 45 minutes in Palisade or another 15 minutes after that. So an hour away from Grand Junction, Colorado, that's your big town. Um, this is crazy big ranch. It's like 400 square miles. And um, you can kind of see behind Melissa and uh, Dakota, the mentors, you can kind of see where it looks like there's been a burn. Three years ago, um, it was one of the biggest fires, um, the top three biggest fires fire that we've ever had in Colorado. So it didn't burn the entire ranch, but it definitely burned enough of the ranch to impact how they are running the ranch. So they still have some debris flows when it um, rains. And I asked them, I said, so what do the cattle do when the debris flows happen? And um, they don't have to move them. The cattle actually know that when it starts raining to get to high ground and get out of the way. Thought that was kind of interesting. Um, it's a pretty small team. You'd be working with Dakota and Melissa like I said, are the mentors. And then they also have two ranch hands. So the apprentice would be the fifth person. Um, there is some horse work. Um, it's when they are making long moves, um, larger, um, like over a mile, 10 mile moves with the, uh, with the cows. Otherwise, um, they get to do some um, four wheel, four wheelers. However, the ATVs, because of the fire, there's a lot of stumps left that will actually pop the tires. So you also would want to be prepared that you're moving um, animals on foot um, and that that can be daily. And a lot of that also has to do with the rough terrain that you're moving um, animals in. So um, Melissa's super interested in uh, low stress livestock handling. So that would be part of it. Um, Dakota has quite a conservation background. Um, I think both of them went to Berkeley. Um, and um, so a lot of learning to be had, a lot of talking about land management, as well as the cattle, ban uh, cattle management as well. So Red Wing Ranch, if you have ever been to the Great Sand Dunes in uh, the San Luis Valley? It's literally on the other side of the San Grady Cristo Mountains. Um, it's pretty isolated. It's extremely gorgeous there. Um, it starts, It's it's got a lot of elevation change in it. So it starts at like 7,200 feet and that's where most of the grazing goes on. And then it goes up into um, a good part of the San, uh, San Grady Cristo Mountains. Um, it is a custom grazing uh, operation, so there is no calving. When the apprentice first would get there, there would be lots of infrastructure work, lots of irrigation. And then once the uh, cows come in, and this year they were telling me they're thinking about bringing in uh, about 400 head to custom graze. There's daily moves, um, Christy, it has definitely has quite a strong conservation background as well. So they'll, you'll have some experience with the conservation side of the land management. The crew size will be Christy, the owner. Uh, Fiona's the ranch manager. They also have a really super ranch hand named Aaron. And then the apprentice would be the fourth person um, on that crew. Also, I thought it was kind of cool. One of their um, first things that they want to teach the uh, apprentice is how to run a skid steer and a backhoe. So that was one of their first goals. So Cold Mountain Ranch um, is in quite a touristy part of Colorado. It's kind of central Colorado. I think you're about 30 miles from Aspen and about 10 miles up from Glidwin Springs. Um, the actual ranch is only three miles from Carbondale, which has lots of restaurants. It's kind of an artsy, um, outdoorsy little town. It's actually really cool. Um, mountain biking, fishing, hiking would be stuff that you could do on your day off. Um, Marge and uh, Bill are the mentors. Marge was actually born on the ranch. So um, her family purchased, um, I think, one part of the ranch in the 1920s. Um, and then Bill came from the East Coast in the 70s to hay and work for her dad. And um, they have been ranching together ever since. Um, super, super sweet couple. 
Um, there's definitely hang uh, with this uh, mentor site. Um, Bill's going to do um, at least two cuttings and quite a bit of irrigation. Um, come June, the animals will be moved up um, onto two Forest Service uh, grazing permits, and that's where the horsemanship will come in. They're more than willing to teach someone who hasn't been around horses um, some beginning horsemanship, and you won't be up in the mountains every day. It'll be um, one or two days a week to go up and uh, and check the animals up there. Um, it's kind of interesting. Where I live, we don't have this but it, multiple ranches share the same grazing permit. And then I guess there's um, like a grazing manager that stays up there all the time. And um, and they do big moves with the animals, but, but also you come up and help with those big moves as one of the ranchers. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say about Gold Mountain. So San Ron Ranch, is, our mentors are George and Julie, and they are actually the original mentors. Um, they founded this program. They designed our mentor apprenticeship program. And um, Julie's still very involved as one of our team, um, NAP team members. She uh, helps with training our mentors. Um, she also works with the apprentices on holistic goal setting, which is something that um, our apprentices generally really enjoy. Um, it is a high elevation uh, operation. It's, um, it's in the San Luis Valley. It's pretty isolated. The nearest town is about 10 miles away uh, named Sawatch, Colorado. There's a couple restaurants up there and a little market and a gas station. Um, your big towns would be an hour away, either Salida, Colorado, or to the south, Alamosa, Colorado. Um, George has been a holistic management practitioner um, since the 70s. Um, so he's been at the forefront of this movement of regenerative agriculture. It's cow-calf operation. Um, come when the grass is ready, they do move the animals up um, onto rangeland. And that's where some horsework will come into play. They move the animals, um, sometimes just placing them with the horses. And then sometimes they also use electric fence as well. So those are Holly's sites in Colorado. We might have, I think we have one left after a couple of my slides, but back to, um, <laughs> that's okay. We, would, we didn't order this great, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so Round River is a site that's been in our program for quite a few years. Lewis Martin is originally from Texas, but has really developed this amazing structure of a business where he actually doesn't own any cows and he doesn't own any land, but he operates on a very, very enormous scale. So um, if you're interested in learning more about that, Lewis has, like I said, he's had a lot of apprentices in the past and at this point is really looking for folks who like they don't have to necessarily come in with a ton of experience, but he's looking for people that are at least open to the idea of sticking around for a couple of years. You know, he's sort of of the mind that, and I think I really agree with him, that you really need to spend a couple of years on a ranch to get to know it and really learn all of the skills that you need. And, you know, the apprenticeship program is great, but if folks are interested, if they're like, okay, I've got, you know, so I'm ready to settle down somewhere. Um, he actually has quite nice housing out there in Eastern Colorado and and has an incredible compensation package for folks that want to stay on. So he's been known to pay for ranching for profit school, send you to holistic management workshops. Um, he has a, a equipment uh, bonus where if you don't break any equipment, you get a bonus every month and it accrues. And um, yeah, so there's no horse use on this operation. It's on sort of the rolling plains in Eastern Colorado ATVs, UTVs, trucks. Uh, it's pretty remote. However, we have two other mentor sites that are actually within an hour of it. So you're you're remote from everyone else, but you actually do have some folks that you already know. And then, yeah, I think I said the other two. Um, I think he'll actually only hire one apprentice this year. And then another important aspect to this operation is it's very independent work. I think Lewis has sort of a, yeah, he has his own mentorship style and that he's like, this is a space for people to try and learn and mess up on someone else's dime. And so 
He's not going to be there with you 100% of the time. You're going to be out there working independently. And if you need him, you come get him. And that's sort of, so it's kind of like taking the training wheels off in a way. So if you feel like you're ready for that or interested in that, um, Run River might be a good one for you. Collins Ranch is another one that I was talking about, is in that little cluster on the Eastern Plains. It's in Kit Carson, and this is Toby and Amy. You can see from their photo that they are just very cute and uh, friendly people. My cat's yelling at me. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> um, so they're on the Eastern Plains again. They are large acreage, cow-calf operation. They've been doing rotational grazing for a long time. And so she has passed her map and she anticipates teaching an apprentice how to use that software. And there's also a direct market beef business. So if you're interested in the actual meat side of things, I forgot to mention that about the home ranch too, but they're also um, do beef um, sales. And there is horses included in this, like there's, that's a part of the operation, but definitely uh, a little wary of folks that are like, I love horses, all I wanna do is ride a horse. Um, cause you'll be using them, but it's not going to be the center of the operation of your day. And Flying Diamond is the third of those three. These guys are actually related to Toby and Amy. These, um, so Charlie and Will are Amy and Toby's nephews. So the whole family sort of started homesteading there and then the ranch got split up. So it's kind of confusing, but, uh, the Flying Diamond Ranch got gigantic. So Flying Diamond is a large scale. If you're interested in really um, land stewardship on a large scale, these guys have leases sort of here and there that patchwork together. Um, horses are optional. Like they're, you know, they sort of, they use them occasionally. If you are interested in learning, they will teach you. But it's definitely not, again, a, a central part to the operation. And yeah, they are also a little concerned about the remoteness. So the house is huge. Um, it's not like it hasn't been lived in consistently, but it's it's this huge house and it's probably best for like, if you have a, if you're a couple and you're interested in even both of you working, that might be a good option, but they kind of want to make sure that you're not lonely out there because Kit Carson is quite remote. Um, it has a grocery store and all that, but you'll find that a lot of towns in Montana and Colorado, you know, you'll, you'll see firsthand our rural communities are as small as you think they are. <laughs> and that can be a really amazing thing, but can also be kind of a, a new experience for folks. So, ah, I don't think your wolf cattle company made it in, Holly. I can just tell everybody about that. Sure. Um, so Wolf Cattle Company is down in the southwestern corner. Um, it's right on the edge of the San Juan Mountains. It's right on the edge of three major mountain passes. Um, it is owned by a wealthy landowner, but um, run more like a family ranch. Hannah and Joel um, Northey um, are the ranch managers, have been for quite some time. They also have a crew of... Um, two other gentlemen that they feel would have a lot to offer in um, teaching an apprentice uh, different skills on the ranch. Oh, it, it appeared. <laughs> Sorry, that so, was my bad. I must have skipped it. Huh? I never even saw you <laughs> skip it. So um, so there's the mountain range behind it. I, if you're familiar with Colorado at all, um, you know, so first of all, Ridgeway is a pretty high elevation town anyway. The ranch headquarters is um, in that valley. It's three miles from the little town of Ridgeway. Um, but then once the snow melts um, and the grasses start to grow, they have um, some high country pasture up in um below Snaffles, up near Dallas Divide, so kind of headed towards Telluride. And then they have another one that's between Telluride and Norwood smacked up against um, some mountains as well. So um, they do do a lot of horse work. And um, basically, they're looking for people that do have some horsemanship skills and that are familiar with riding in the mountains. Um, you don't have to have worked cattle in the mountains, but they would like you to have some experience of, um, of riding and working in, up in the mountains um, on horseback. It is a cow-calf um, 
operation and um there's when you first get there there's going to be calving as well as irrigating because they do hay um down um in the valley near ridgeway and then um, they've got some cabins and some places that once the um, animals uh, are, once the livestock's up in the mountains, that you actually stay up there in the cabins um, for different times, um, like different, like a week or so at a time. Um, they are new. We're super excited to work with them. And um, yeah. Oh, and location wise, um, there's Ridgeway's kind of a cool little touristy town. It's like 10 miles from Uray, which has is a big hot springs town. It's supposedly the Switzerland of the United States. It's really cool, actually. And then your your big town, <laughs> Colorado big town, is uh Montrose. And there is a little airport there and um full shopping centers. Um, so you're about an oh, actually, yeah, you're about an hour away. So awesome. thanks for finding that, Luca. Yeah, so um, as you can see, I, I think that um, most of you have heard this already, but yeah, five sites is usually what you want to shoot for. Um, we left our information here because generally we toss out the, the offer that if any folks need help sort of um, refining their choices and maybe being, you know, if you have any questions about like, oh, what, what is their personality like or um, what what is the ecology like, you know, anything like that that's a little more nuanced. We uh, would love if you could take a look at the site descriptions, narrow it down to like seven, and then we'll help you narrow it down to more like five, if you can. So um, it just helps us sort of not have to start at square one with every single applicant. So, but feel free to reach out. If you have any other concerns too, say, um, you know, you have a partner that you want to come with you or maybe stay part-time, that's something that we should know pretty early on. It's not like it's um, like things like that can be worked in and be accommodated as long as you are up front with it. So, so yeah, with that, I will open the floor. If any folks have questions, you can raise your hand through Zoom, you can put in the chat or just come off mute. Yeah, and just a, sorry to jump in, just a quick comment that new agrarian at kiviracoalition.org email goes to all of us. Um, so if you have questions, that email address works for all of us. If you have a question for uh, particularly a particular one of us coordinators, um, you can just address the email to that person you want to talk to. And like I said, we'll see it all. So, yeah, good point. Yeah, I'll just mention that some of those sites uh, were new and I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but sometimes it doesn't really kick in until you're there. Um, new sites are new for us too. So we're not, we always kind of like go into that first season hoping everything goes well, it usually does, but you know, that's also something to consider too. If you're, if you want someone that's been in our program forever, or if they're, if, if you're okay with them kind of learning as you're learning. Uh, Emma, go ahead. I was just wondering, um, I was assuming it's probably on a case by case basis, but do most of the ranches, would they let you bring your own dog with you? So this is super dependent on the site. So you're going to have to look at each site and they'll say pets in the nuts and bolts section. So it's, it's um, actually very important. Some people are like no pets, no dogs, or some folks will let you keep them at home while you work. So it's really, it's variable. Thank you. <laughs> and one thing to consider with pets, um, yeah, definitely make sure that is known in your application that mentors who you apply to can see that you might have a cat or you might have a dog if you add another sentence or two about anything that needs to be known about it. Um, there might even be a rancher or two who will let you come with your horse. Um, but what we can't do is have pets at our orientation or any of our in-person events. 
Um, so keep that in mind as you're going to be on pretty remote operations. Um, that That is definitely something to really plan for. Yeah, we've had folks use boarding facilities if they're going to a bigger town or, you know, communicating with your mentor and being like, is it okay if I leave my dog with your dogs? Something like that. Just, we just encourage from the get go, just open and honest. Like, don't, I, I think it's better to be honest about it than to hold it until the very last minute of the second interview and be like, I have a dog. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, very frustrating on their end. And so I think it, it, it works way better if they know from the very get go. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Good question. Yeah, Kaylin. Um, I have experience working on ranches on like guest ranches as far as hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, is there much people that have that transition into from guest relations to the ranch side of it? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'd say so. Hayden, you look like you were nodding. Do you have any experience with that? Yeah, our, our one who might be a second year started on guest ranches. Um, I think it's important to be clear that you've worked on a guest ranch, maybe horse heavy and not a ton of cattle, but I think all of our mentors, as long as they know that, um, that you're not trying to say it was a ranch, you know, and you're just really transparent, but yeah, we've had at least one for sure transfer from that to our apprenticeship program. Yeah. We've had folks with really variety, wide variety of backgrounds. So, you know, I think it's really all about, a, your personality in your interview and what shines through in your application and B, how you're accentuating what you learned at those sites. So, um, you know, really, really pulling out um, relevant skills and experiences for this is what is most important. Hey. Well, cool. Well, um, yeah, I highly recommend watching that recording of the tips and tricks webinar that Luke and I did last week it really goes into some common mistakes that folks make that we see and it's like, ah, it's really simple and it makes a huge difference. So I really recommend watching that. One example is please use Microsoft Word to write your application. Our website is not reliable in terms of like we, you know, filling it all out and then you go pee and you come back and it's all refreshed and it's all gone. Um, not to mention when you, when you put, when you submit your application, you should get an email. That's a confirmation. If you don't get that email. Um, you, you might have to submit it again. It, it might've been a glitch in the system. So that's why it's really important to have that Microsoft Word document or something else to back it up. So, um, yeah, don't want to be, that's always such a tragic mistake that folks make. So please don't do that. Okay. Well, feel free to reach out to us anytime you guys, we, this is what we do right now is just support people in applying and helping them shape up their application to be really strong. So reach out if you have any questions at all. And um, yeah, December 15th is the, is the deadline and we'll look forward to seeing all your names and hopefully seeing y'all in interviews. Thanks for showing up today and we'll talk soon. Thanks everyone.